Okay. There you go. Okay, so Father, we just thank you that we are already seated in heavenly places with you. And right now at this time, we just turn our attention to the heavenly places where we are. And we open ourselves up to receive from you, to receive what you want us to receive. You are a good God. You're continually giving us stuff, whatever we need in our hearts, in our minds. Um, you're a God of abundance, Father, and you always have something for us. So right now we just, we open our hearts to receive from you. And as a fellowship together, we step in. But before we do, I want us to take a big, deep breath. Breathe out and hold it out. So you've got no breath in your body. And then on the count of three, two, one, as you step in, take a deep breath. As Avril was, was praying, about what we need. I saw myself just laying down in this big, plush, dark pink bed, just like sinking into this bed, like, ah, oh, I need to just rest and do that, just receive that rest. When you had us take that breath that way, and I just, um, took in the deep breath. It's like, all of a sudden I felt like I stepped into a garden with fresh air. And it was oh, just so delightful just to hear, you know, see the aroma or hear, smell the aroma and just recognize the garden is well cared for. Mm, it was so nice. Refreshing. Yeah, felt like. I love that. Breathe that in, breathe that in. Now I'm seeing the garden too, Barbara. I'm seeing like a, a wall made out of these huge cut stones and it's just a lot of shade. Very nice. Maybe some birds. Lively yeah. Chirping in the background. yeah, I can see that too, guys. I also um, just wanted to, to add to that is um, I see all of this. And, um, but the, the presence of God hit me so hard. You know, when you feel almost that intoxication? Uh, anyway, so I just want to release that to all of you here, too. Just that. I, re I receive it. That, yeah. That, it, that it, weighty presence. Yes, Lord, your joy, your presence. Thank you for that, Lord. I think it's something key that I think was Barbara said that the garden was so well cared for. I think there's some juice on that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We are his garden. That yeah, is true. Can you imagine, Peter, if we really were conscious of that throughout the day? how it would change our perceptions that we are his garden. Yes. Oh, that's wow. That's a cool image. <laughs> cool image to see ourselves as. Mm. I, think, I think Misty. Um, Edwards. Thank you. Misty Edwards has, has a song. Yes, it's called Garden. I like it a lot. Yeah. I haven't heard it for a long time. So, so I'm getting analogies here with, with the garden and it's like <laughs> the gardener tends to the garden and he prunes when he, where he needs to prune and he, he does things to make everything more beautiful. But it's not... It's not the plants that prune themselves. It's the gardener that prunes the plants. So again, just resting and letting, letting God work on us. 
instead of striving to think we need to better ourselves. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Gabriel, I'm 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 sorry, but I see you with a flower in your face. <laughs> <laughs> I really that's funny. I was just thinking of that as you said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. I'm experiencing something that's kind of neat to recognize that we are experiencing two realms at the same time. You know, when I close my eyes, like Eloise was showing, talking about earlier, I can see the garden that we're walking in. And then if I open my eyes, I'm right in front of the window looking out <laughs> at the unkempt uh, woods that we have behind our house. And I thought, Oh, it's like everywhere we go, we can realize and recognize that we can be in both dimensions at the same time. Amazing. You know, one is perfectly cared for, and the other one has all the effects of our self-effort as human beings <laughs> and the forces of evil that have defiled it. And yet, when we want to escape, we can just tune into our heavenly realm and see the garden well cared for. Yep, stay tuned. Uh huh. And it's just that sense of choosing which consciousness we want to experience in each moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you know, I think it's we like a dual lifestyle is twins. You know. <laughs> you can. Mm. Um. We've talked about it before, right? That we're we're even operating in more than two realms. It's yeah. becoming aware of it. It's becoming aware of it, and I think that that comes with time. I'm just getting the two now, Jim. I know. <laughs> I don't want you to get too comfortable, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> you got to start somewhere, right, Barbara? And, uh, you know, there's, there's even, there's, e there, there's even beauty in like the chaos, right? Or the, un even the unkept uh, area out back. That's my favorite spot, but, you know, it's like, sometimes I feel like I need to get out and fix it. Yeah. And this way, I can just go up the garden and see, you know, get right. some inspiration <laughs> yeah. and then come back and project it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well-kept garden doesn't mean it's kept like a, you know, like a pruned rose garden. I think yeah. well a well-kept garden, a well-tended garden is one that allows each plant to be its to to be who the plant to 
to have the properties that the plant is, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's not, my favorite Not the best kind. grammar there, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, um, I used to drive my gardener crazy, but that's the, <laughs> that's the way I liked the garden, you know, yeah, like wild well. and colorful yeah. and yeah. It drove him nuts. Yeah, and just let, let, it, let it be, let it yeah. do its thing, yeah, absolutely. And even earlier when I was using that analogy, I wasn't thinking of a completely pruned rose garden, like those yeah. cut hedges and everything. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of just a lush garden with just growth and beauty in it. Yes. But it, it's, it's also personal um, preference. Because yeah. if you're one of those people that like a neat pruned garden, then, then go for it. You know, that's your <laughs> Yeah. Father, we just thank you. We just thank you for this, this space. There's these dimensions that we're experiencing and, and they're downloaded into us. We have the opportunity to release them and always be aware of them. It's like his fragrance, you know, mm -hmm. your fragrance, Father. Right before you spoke, um, Jill, I, I saw like weeping willow branches mm -hmm. you know how long and i saw them uh like floating they weren't being driven but they were like floating horizontally on the breeze that was brisk but it wasn't stormy and then after i saw that image then all of a sudden it's like the um trees started creating an arch mm -hmm. and then i saw a path begin to form and it's like it's um it's a green canopy over the over this archway, and it's like a, almost like a tunnel of greenery, and it's so inviting. And I just wonder if you know we're supposed to walk along the path and see what God has leading us to. I think I think it'd be great. Is that okay with everyone here? Can we do that? Yeah. Okay. You want to lead us? Just okay, Father. We just thank you for opening this pathway before us, and we just thank you that you are our shepherd and you are leading us. And so, we just choose to follow you and we just trust you that you're going to lead us into something really special. <laughs> so, we just step out and together we just move forward with you. This beautiful archway of greenery. A smooth path. It's not on a hill. It's just sort of flat, and um, it's not perfectly straight, but it's meandering through this greenery. Beautiful. I can feel it. Mm hmm. Mm, I can feel the smell, the freshness of it. Mm I find myself taking, you know, a lot of deep breaths. Mm -hmm. Breathing, breathing him. So when we first stepped in, I became aware of my breath breathing out. And it was like when you breathe out on a cold day and you can see your breath, but it wasn't cold. Mm -hmm. I, I was just aware of that. And I've been aware of that this whole time. So I just thought I'd mention it when Jill says about the breath. I'm aware of like this white vapor coming out of our breath mm -hmm. as we're breathing, as we're moving. And it's like crystal and clear and 
It's like it's it's really fresh and pure. Mm. I just asked the Lord what it was, and I heard it's the condensation of your desire. I don't know what that means. Oh, that's oh I love that. I love it yep. too. I don't know what it means, but it sounds really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing it down. That statement reminds me of something I was reading this week, and it struck me. I, I was in Isaiah, Jeremiah, or Ezekiel. I can't remember exactly where. But in the same verse, it mentioned the breath, and it mentioned the spirit. And I thought, I thought the Hebrew word for both of those English words was the same. But I think, you know, God... You know, you're making a distinction here between our breath and the spirit. So I was asking him for more understanding on that difference. And when you said the con condensation of our desire, that would be our human breath, wouldn't it? Yes. And then the spirit would be the holiness. Mm. Yeah. And they work together. Yeah, you know, it, and often our desires are really from him, right? Often, not always. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, that's, that's the ideal that he's trying to bring us to. Yeah, that beautiful entangling and mm -hmm. mingling. When, when we are in the garden, I sense that is an intimacy call. And uh, God really wanted just to be there to be enjoyed as he enjoyed us and we enjoying him. Yes, thank you, Anna. Yeah, and also is he want us coming up ascension in that intimacy is we can lay down our all burdens just to get close to him, to know him. Yes. And then, and then it's like the breath. It's like, it's so, everything around the garden is so breathtaking, but it's like a breath that we take in that refreshness, that replenish all our ourselves with frequency with sensor everything then god will help us because we are letting go we are letting go all the confusions all the um dis distractions in our life not focus on us but we are focused on god the father god jesus yeah. and holy spirit then our perspective i feel like that breath coming in us is like give us we gain, we gain our 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 purpose, his purpose in us. Yeah, that's good. Yes. So where are we now? Can someone give a quick recap for me? Well, we basically we're walking down the can a, uh, a canopy of uh, willow trees. Their branches have formed this green canopy above us and. We're walking, it's just another part of the garden. And we're just sharing the things that we're, we're getting. 
you know, Thanks. we're experiencing, yeah. yeah. And that rest leads to transformation. That's good, yes. Yes. <laughs> I just, um, <clears throat> as we were walking and just, you know, enjoying and talking, I saw like this really crude hand painted sign, like, you know, you see on an island, you know, on that kind of wood, bleached wood with a hemp rope. And it, it said joy with an arrow straight ahead. <laughs> like, this is a garden of joy as well. I second for that. I feel like that God increased our joy as yeah. we're meeting him in the garden. Yeah. Does anybody see any flowers? I have a sense that there's something really pink and pretty, but I can't, I can't see it. Yes, Barb's. I can see flowers earlier. I feel like we're all laying down in the uh, lots of flowers. Oh, Surrounded. cool. <laughs> and Barb, I started out seeing a very dark pink, very plush, like bedspread or mattress that's laying on that bed. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm also seeing um, they're really more like <clears throat> they're huge, you know, they're huge flowers, like the blossoms are, the petals are almost, you know, 12 inches long each. And they, they look a lot like, um, oh, lilies. Oh. And they're, they're outlined in gold. They're outlined in gold. And I just I see them everywhere. I've seen them. I was noticing them even before you mentioned flowers, uh, Barbara. I want to share what um, a couple of things that I was seeing. Um, this last one, um, a giant scroll. It's gold, um, and then the the parchment, you know, paper is all white, and this kind of goes with what Barb was saying about following. That it's a path. And it's unfolding as we're walking on it. Yeah. And it's, you know, giant, huge. So I don't know if it's, I mean, I know it's for me, but also, you know, the group, the church. Um, and it's kind of just like as we're walking on that, 
um, and following its unfolding um, from the right side, that big gold, but it, it's a scroll that you can walk on like a, you know, a map. Um, so, and then the other thing was earlier um, before uh, Barb, you shared about, um, and I don't know, I don't remember what you, what you said, but I was um, seeing things and meditating on it about, um, I, I don't know exactly what you said, but it was about um, between the, the darkness and the light and um, about the two, oh, that we were walking in two worlds. So um, what I saw was a warrior angel. I mean, one of the large angels, um, as he's touching down to earth, um, his wingspan, like on one side is dark and on the other side, it's like a grayer light. And then in between is the white. And he was saying, and the shining, and, and the Lord was saying, it's just, you know, y'all are just going to get brighter and brighter. And maybe it isn't so much that we're getting, you know, shining more, although we are, but that, you know, um, we're, we're more aware of it. And the more awareness is bringing more of the light. And that's changing those two worlds on either side. Um, like you were saying, you know, the, the two dimensions, natural, supernatural. Um, the Lord gave, had given me a word, um, you know, that I, I shared about uh, the parting of the Red Sea when we were, you know, through Passover yesterday was, you know, the last day of Nisan. And so it was um, like the supernatural, you know, heavenly on one side, and then, you know, the natural on the other. And then, you know, that separation in between is that demarcation where we walk. And so he's just telling me, you know, like, unless you pray for it, it's not going to happen. Unless you say it, it's not going to come to pass. Yeah, the darkness might be getting darker, but by you praying and saying and, and seeing these things, you're calling forth more of the light and it's it's coming into that other side of, you know, the natural or the gray, because I mean, really, this is what's on what's on my heart is seeing these things manifest, and how mm -hmm. the Lord says, you know, it's manifest in you, and I, um, I want this to be your reality on earth as it is in heaven, and so um, anyway, that's all I wanted to share for now. Thanks, Maggie. That's good, Maggie. I started sharing. I saw like an, an arm holding out like a, a bowl, like a dog food bowl, that type of shape of bowl. Like this angel's arm just giving us something in the bowl. Don't know what, but it's good. Thanks, Peter. You know, I'm <clears throat> most often I find myself in that you know you have two circles together uh, two circles next to each other and then you they merge and then there's that space that you were talking about uh maggie and i i now see most of the time not always but most of the time that place is being you know merged the spirit and the natural crossing over and i i, I you know i believe when we see it it surely helps it manifest. We feel that in intention also. So the desire and the belief and all of it work together. Jill, I call that I call that the common ground of the covenant. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I've never heard that before. Yeah. I just got it. <laughs> it wasn't oh. my idea. <laughs> just responding to what you said oh. and we were i believe we were made for that right okay tell me again what you call it the what of the covenant barb 
You're muted. She said the common ground of the oh, common ground. Okay. The common ground of the covenant. And like Jesus' character was a manifestation of the total overlap between the two. And so as we are in Christ, God's trying to, to get that to happen to us where the, the overlap will become total. Yes, Instead be heavenly minded, be earthly good. Mm -hmm. No, it's not that we'll be no earthly good. <laughs> we'll be like Jesus, able to transform. We have to be other. earthly good. <laughs> we'll yeah, be like we Jesus. want to be. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the phrase is heavenly minded, no earthly good, but I said the opposite heavenly minded and earthly good. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't hear that part. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Well, you know, you can't really be good on earth unless you're heavenly minded. Very, um, very true. Very true. <laughs> so I, I'm just seeing these um, feet stepping, and each time they step, it's a, a brick of gold. And, um, you know, we know that the streets of heaven are paved with gold, or, you know. So it's kind of like, you know, he's saying as you're stepping out, then your pathway becomes golden you know, becomes. So you kind of, like you were saying, Jill, you have to believe, you have to see it, you have to speak it, you have to know it, and you know that you're carrying heavenly answers, that you're carrying heavenly provision, that you're carrying, um, you know, heaven with you in your heart, in your mouth, and as you step out into it and, and walk it through. So kind of tying all of that together. Yeah, that's good, Maggie. Thank you. <clears throat> and before you know it, it just it's just the way you start thinking, you know. It comes very natural. Peter, what's the uh, reference for that verse that says God has blessed us? with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. That's Ephesians, I would, right? I, I, I can't remember. I just read all over and I don't remember the address. But I always wonder, why is it always in the heavenly places? Because that's where our partnership comes in. We have to bring it down to earth by stepping out in it. I like that, Maggie. Thank you. Yeah, when we started, I saw a big gold box like... Um, the emoji for presence, you know, with the red bow, mm -hmm. I, that's what mm -hmm. I saw, but a big one. Um, so I felt like, you know, he had a gift for us, not just for me. And what he's saying to me is like, trade in whatever vision that you have wow. of things past mm -hmm. yeah. that don't line up with the vision that I've given you and what I say to you and what I've, you know, called your future and prophesied um, that to become and to be because we're, as we're walking in the fulfillment of, of what he said, as we're walking in it, that's the fulfillment, you know, it has the, you know, his word doesn't return void. And so it has mm -hmm. that potentiality to become by us walking it out and carrying that word and that promise and that hope. Um, you know, he gave me this morning, expect good things, you know, have that expectation of only good because he's a good God and he's for us and with us and working through us. I'm preaching now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <Yes. laughs> Woo, we like that. <laughs> Let's ask the Lord, what's in that bowl you have for us? Represent us in doing that, Peter. I'm seeing food. Well, we know one bowl in heaven that's gold, that's the prayer of the saints, but I don't know if that's, you know, what he's showing you or giving you. Well, this is a bowl down of good things, like we're blessed with 
good things from the Father? I immediately saw uh, frankincense resin, you know, which is, you know, talked about in the word. Um, and I saw big chunks of gold in it. So that's what I saw. We'll take it, the prosperity, the, the priestly role, we'll take it all. I saw a gold nugget too, but I looked in the box and the box was just like ginormous and black. And I, right down at the very bottom was a, a, a gold nugget. And I said, thank you, Lord, I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lord, yeah. Oh, and I can see it's raining golden nuggets. <laughs> As I like picked up that nugget, it was like God was like, do you want more? And it was quite humorous because I said, thank you. I'll tre treasure this little golden nugget. <laughs> this little <laughs> <So>, pebble. <laughs> and this was his humor. I was like, do you want more? And now it's just raining nuggets. Uh, I love it. Thank you, Father. I know someone that, um, or I, you know, I knew them where I used to live, that um, money rained down from heaven and she just went out and was catching it all. <laughs> and um, she's, you know, not even a spirit filled person. So, what's the address? Be, yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was um, in another part of Texas. Uh, that I moved from um, Dallas, Dallas, Fort Worth. I'm trying to think what city. But anyway, um, she uh, went to, it was a very conservative church and she was, you know, not spirit filled or anything. So for her to tell me this miracle happened and she had to get out of her car and it was just for her. And it was just raining down all this money. I think she said it was like $500 total or something. Oh but, my goodness. You know, I've heard like um, Andrew Womack and, you know, mm -hmm. Like you hear, like, you know, God's not a counterfeiter. He's not going to send you money. You know, you have to like, you know, um, sow seed or whatever. But I remember this happening and I know that I've had money manifest. Yes. And and I've even seen little gold pieces like in the carpet, a little flex and, and things. But um, I've, you know, not nuggets yet. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's but on the was, horizon. Maybe tonight, Maggie. Yeah, and I see diamonds all the time too. And I mean, people have had manifestation of diamonds and gemstones and mm -hmm. things. So, you know, and people have manifestation of, of um, gold dust. I've had that happen to me once, but there's people that, you know, I know that ha it happens all the time. So, um, or a lot, I should say, not all the yes. time. Yes, yeah. So, um, but yeah, the most that, you know, I've had like the gold flex, but I've had lots and lots of, you know, just supernatural provision of material things as well as actual money. So every time I hear that, like that God's not a counterfeiter, he's not going to send you money. There's no money in heaven. I'm just like, well, I don't know. because I disagree. It, it's yeah. not counterfeit. Yeah, it's not counterfeit money. From somewhere, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and I mean, like, even when people pray, it's like, okay, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, you know, he has it. Well, yeah. he has people, yes, that distribute and all of that. But also, you know, I mean, he knew where the fish was that had the gold coin. So it's exactly. like, he knows where or how, and it doesn't have to be made in heaven necessarily. But I don't know, she, she said, uh, it was raining like falling down like rain like from nowhere like just out of the sky so i love um, it <laughs> yes the it god owns a thousand hills and those are real cows not not counterfeit yeah <laughs> tell, tell tell andrew he's being a party pooper yeah <laughs> and i was raining here um last night and I was praying, but I was seeing like he a heavenly downpour, but it was like gold. And I was thinking it was provision, but like I, I was praying for myself as well as, you know, I know a lot of people that, you know, right. 
you know, trying to like get Make businesses me. started yeah. and, you know, they want to um, give to the church and give yeah. and things, you know? So, I mean, I have, uh, that's, you know, those are the two things that people ask for prayer for typically is, you know, for financial and for healing. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, I was seeing this downpour and I was like, yeah, yeah, wash, wash over, <laughs> wash over me with this um, heavenly downpour and, you know, provision, it, it's not just like, you know, the actual money necessarily, but the ideas or the answers. Of exactly. Yeah. What to do, you know, to, you know, where the wiser investments are and, and to do the most good with what you have and, you know, all of that. So anyway. Yeah, I agree, Maggie. Yeah. It's a abundance in all things. And I mean, the Lord is the one who's bringing it up. It's his idea. Yeah. Know? I mean, he's always saying these things to me and it's all over in scripture. So, I mean, mm -hmm. he really does want us uh, to be pro provisioners. Provisioners. You know? <laughs> yeah. and, and, and really co-labor carrying out funding what they call the end time harvest, you know? So, I mean, that I used to preach that a lot and I saw supernatural miracles in the churches where I preached. And I'm talking about like the poorest churches in Mexico, you know? So, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I know it's, it's real. And I saw that back then as just a foretaste of what, you know, God wants to do. Um, and, and I, you know, massively in a larger scale in, in all churches, you know, and all with all people that are willing but, but I know he gives us that scroll, that map, those instructions, and he's just putting that so heavy in my heart. Unless you pray it, unless you say it, it's not going to happen. Well, yeah, I mean, we all operate differently, too. I, I think our heart speaks. I mean, from my, from my experience, I'm, uh, I'm not negating what you shared at all, Maggie. For me, often it's it's just our heart speaks, right? It's the resonance. Mm -hmm. I think the what she's attention. talking about is when so oftentimes in the church, we've been taught to be passive. So we just sit around and wait, uh, you know, instead of yeah, believing. Yeah. I see what and you mean. And so yes. the difference is believing, speaking, walking, talking. Yeah. You know, expecting. Expecting. As opposed, yes. As opposed to just say, well, God, when are you going to show up? You know? <laughs> Right. Being passive and taking no initiative. Well, you know, I believe we have complete access to the storehouses of heaven. Um, I agree. He is our father, right? We are, we are in his house and we are his children. We have complete access. It's only our thinking mm -hmm. that he stops us from being completely abundant. And thinking, you know, I mean, that's programmed into us for many ways, for many things. But... Um, if we can just, just like we are in heavenly places, we know, you know, you know that. So to access it, you just have to be aware of it. Same thing with, with abundance. We have access mm -hmm. to the cattle of a thousand hills. It's a, we have it all. It's a matter of understanding that we have it. But I think God in his wisdom only unlocks that understanding once you're in a position of good stewardship. That's yeah. what I feel. You know, I think mm -hmm. that that's when he starts really unlocking. It's not because you have to do all, it or anything or perform, but I think you have to be wise yes. enough, connected into God enough for him to unlock that so that mm -hmm. you do become good stewards of his abundance. And I think, you know, it's, we have to become trustworthy, I think is what you're saying, because yeah. God's not going to give us more than he can trust us with. And it's us yeah, learning how to not, trust ourselves yeah. with what God wants to give us, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with all you are saying, but I just want to bring in another aspect that I'm sensing. The goal, um, the value on earth is totally so different than, than the value in heaven. Yeah. So even the goal, God is paving the street. Yeah. The it's street, abundant there. Yes. Yeah, but but that's what I'm sensing that when when we see gold leaf, like the, the flower have gold leaf, and 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 the golden street, 
and and uh, a lot of uh, like a golden other thing. I, I felt like God want us to know that how pressure we are as individual, mm. as his daughter and his son, that he delighted in us. Mm, that's yes, nice. thank you. And, and, yeah, and then he wants us to knowing that like I, I feel like that all the all the um, amazing soul like gold or whatever scenery, he just he just wants us to know that he is abundant. There's no other God that is so abundant, more than enough as him. Yes. Then, it come, it, then it come back to, in the beginning, is the intimacy. Is that that's why we can lay down all our concerns, all our burdens, and knowing that, well, his value of gold is even not a very important mon- a commodity in the heaven. Everything mm-hmm. that he take care he take care of the uh, the flower. He take care of the birds. He's taking <laughs> care of us. I just felt like that. That is like he want us to know our true identity as son and daughters. Then, because we know who we are, and knowing that we can we can kind of like access to the two realms. So yes. so being supernatural, being in natural, eventually as we. And we knowing it as who we are. I, I felt like I felt like that is our inheritance as son and daughter. Mm-hmm. That's our identity, and he he he, he want us to know that we belong to him. Yeah, we are we are his. Thank you, Anna. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I want to say, Jill, I, you know, I agree with what you're saying, because this is, I mean, I'm sharing what he was saying to me, because I do a lot of, you know, prophetic work and a lot of intercession. But um, I just like for an example to share with you, um, for me, you know, like with my job back in December, it was super, super slow. And it didn't occur to me. I mean, I didn't even really realize it, that I needed to pray for the you know, salespeople and for the work to come in. And Mm -hmm. I kind of was just like, you know, I don't want to say complaining, but I was kind of lamenting like, oh, work is so slow. And it was like, yeah, I realize I'm prophesying that instead Mm -hmm. of, you know, by saying it, instead of praying. And, and that's when the Lord told me like, you know, yeah, you're the one that has to pray these things in, even though there's other Christians there. And even though you have the awareness that everything is in me, And if you are praying for it and saying it, you know, it's going to happen. And I mean, that same day, boom, all this business came in. (laughs) And I went for like a month or two. Again, I don't want to say complaining, but I was just telling and saying, and I, you know, I probably even had said to you, Jill, you know, there's just like, no, it hasn't been any work and available. And so I have to find another job. And I was just like talking about it. And it didn't even occur to me that I needed to pray. And he's like, yeah, if you don't pray, it's not going to happen. So that was like the yes. example of why he's saying that, you know, to me, because mm-hmm. that was in my life. Um, and he's just showing me the importance of righteous people praying for the right things in order for it to happen. Because this is a large company and there's a lot of people that are blessed when there's work. And there's a lot of people that, you know, were not seeing paychecks because there wasn't work and, you know, coming in. So anyway. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, I, I, I get off track like that also. Right. (laughs) It's like, wait a minute. And that, that also is, I believe what, you know, is so beautiful <clears throat> about, you know, just talking to other people. They, yeah, re- sure. You know, we remind each other, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> we need that yeah. reminder often. Mm-hmm. We get preoccupied with life over here and we forget sometimes. <laughs> And our friends pull us over and give us a ticket. <laughs> yeah, we really are partakers of, 
you know, like that glory, glory, that is our identity, you know, and yeah. we have the power, we have that authority. But um, I want to say, Avril, and I don't know if, if Jill, uh, if this is okay, but I was just wondering if she might have that on her heart to unlock um, these storehouses and this treasure, because I know I'm not the only one here, but I'm verbalizing it myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, this is, um, you know, what, what I'm, um, because I am um, interviewing for different jobs right now. Okay. And so, um, because, uh, yeah, so anyway, um, <laughs> I don't know, Avril, if that's um, something that you have on your heart or that you feel like that um, you would want to, um, if that's okay, Jill, to ask. Oh, of course, yeah, sure. Uh, Maggie, do you mean like for me to release, to release the opening? What, what is that what you mean what is that what is that what you mean yeah you were talking about unlocking an awareness but also those storehouses and yeah. i know i had that a long time ago that he was showing uh, uh someone like all these vaults and things and he was saying well she's not asking about me right. that i wasn't you know asking for this and right right now i am <laughs> Asking. <laughs> so yeah. if someone is anointed in that area or has confidence or strength in that area which it sounded like you you know what yeah I'm, I can do that because I'm in a state where I'm, I have extreme faith for that at the moment God's just revealed quite a lot to me so beautiful um, yeah yes. so let, let me just let's go through it so <laughs> father we just thank you, Lord, that we yeah. do indeed have access to your storehouses as your children, as your sons and daughters living in your heavenly realm and having access to it. Father, you are in us and we are in you and there's no separation. So there's no, no need for us to ask and beg and plead for you to give us our needs and not only our needs, but abundance, absolute abundance which is your it is your great pleasure to give us abundance so father i just pray now that everyone on this call and that it would have a ripple effect to everyone around them as well that you would just unlock that key that makes them realize who they are to have access to your abundance father mm -hmm. thank you father thank you for that even now lord that you will just unlock each of the hearts to understand that, that abundance is our heritage. It is our, it is your great pleasure to give us abundance in every area in our, in our life. You're not a God that would withhold back and say, no, you don't deserve that. I'm not going to give you that. That's not the heart of you, Father. Your, your heart is to say, what's mine is yours. And, mm. and, have it, and have this abundance. So I just release that now in the name of Jesus over everyone. I receive it. Yes. Thank, thank you. Yes, Lord. Lord. I receive it. Yeah. I receive, mm. thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I receive it I for all the people I'm just, praying for. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, encourage, mm -hmm. I encourage you to just walk in the expectation yes. of, yes. of God lying for you what you need and more so that there's this so that you are the flow that you are the conduit of his supply so not only will it bless you but it will flow through you and bless others and where it needs to go that mm -hmm. you'll there'll never be a situation where you feel you have to hang on tightly to your funds or what you think are your funds or that you would just be so trusting and so aware of God's greatness that things would just flow through you. A nice analogy is a hose pipe. If you think of the water coming out of a hose pipe, if you try to hold on to the water, you can't hold it. But if you just let the water flow through your hands, and that's an analogy that I use in my head, that I'm just holding the hose pipe and God's just letting it flow. And it's the water, the which is representative of his abundance and his supply is just flowing through me over me and to where it needs to go but we don't need to hold on to because as soon as you think of, and i'm guilty of this that's why i'm so passionate about it <laughs> when you 
think, okay, I've got this now, I must hold on to it, I must hold on to it. No, there's no need for us to hold on in the kingdom. When we understand we have ultimate constant supply and flow, you don't need to hold on to anything. So we can give freely because it's, we know that the flow is constant. It's coming constantly. Mm, that's good. Well, I see him handing out deeds of real estate. Yeah. And Jill, you're at the front of the line. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> receiving. Thank you. I'll take thank it. you, Lord. Yes. You know, I was. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Maggie. I was. I was just thinking. You know, I, I, I really. My joy is to help families that are are struggling. Families, you know, single women, older women. Um, you know, often. Often the older people are not living in, in great abundance, you know, and, and families and um, yeah. So I was just thinking about having, you know, an overflow of abundance and what I would like to do with it. And then you said that, so I love it. We can't bless people if we're struggling ourselves. How right. can we be people financially? How can we be generous if, if we don't have supply, but yeah. it's almost a little bit like forgiveness where you have to step out in faith first because you have to get your belief first. So like, you know, when you forgive someone, you might not feel like it, but you say, I choose to forgive this person. Right. So I, if you just like choose to give freely, the supply comes, the supply is backed up. God mm -hmm. is faithful to supply. But if you're waiting for to have enough so you can give, then you're holding on and you're never going to have enough if you've got that mindset. Yes. And I'm preaching to myself now as well. <laughs> we like it. <laughs> so I think that's why God showed me when I, you know, and laughed when I saw the one little nugget and now I was being all holy and saying, thank you God, for my little nugget, you know. I was like, and he said, well, what, is that enough? Do you want more? And then he just made it rain. Like, anyway, you can have as much as you want. You don't have to hold on to it. Just hand it out. <laughs> I've heard God's humor, you know, break in several times. Jill, you said something. And Avril, you said it a couple of times. Yeah. That very thing that how he just surprises us with little riddles or jokes or something just yes. to catch our attention. It holds our attention and draws us away from what we're worried about. <laughs> you know, oh, that's neat. Mm, I'm thinking of all the things I'd like to provide for people. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, Avril, I uh, really see like and, and saw um, like this um, circular motioning as you're praying or talking, and it's like activating multiplication for other people. Oh, and so, like the more that you enter into that, even in your, you know, thought life but if you're releasing it over people or praying it for people it's you know letting that catch on with more people so that they're not only entering in but doing it for more people mm. yes mm. Mm. i love that yeah is that what you're that circular thing that's been posted on the messenger are you relating to that that image of the circle, I'm seeing these circles, spirals, I guess they call them. You know, oh. I can't see a, a lot lately. And I think, what is that? What is that? Oh, oh yeah, the uh, I know what you're talking about. It's spiral in the sky, you know, the yeah, uh, Alaska. Well, I'm seeing it in, yeah, my, yeah. in my imagination, but I thought, yes. oh, that's in the sky, really. 
Yeah, I was, was seeing that too. I saw that like, and it was, mm -hmm. a, the Lord told me it was a sign because it was, uh, they saw it in Alaska. Mm -hmm. um, and there's an explanation, a scientific explanation for it, but that spiral, you know, it means spiritual and, and it's the Lord in motion. And uh, I saw it in gold. And that's what I was seeing when Avril was talking and releasing it was gold and white. And it moves in a circle like a spiral. And so that was like a multiplication. Yeah. Um, oh, that's principle cool. of multiplication. So yeah, all of that is, um, you know, the Lord really likes saying that he's moving and he's doing things. But no, I, I wasn't looking um, at that, but I was seeing it similar to that. But I'm seeing like all this gold. And, mm. you know, like Anna was talking about, I mean, gold represents glory. It represents, you know, weightiness, worthy, worth and worthiness. So, you know, it, but it's also represents wealth, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway. That's good. Mm hmm. Hmm. So let's all agree together. We receive what God has for us, the spiritual blessings, yes. all the blessings in Christ Jesus. We receive the, the glory, the gold, the silver, the cattle. We receive it all and we release it to the world, to the body of Christ, to those where it belongs in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father. Oops. Peter, when you said um, receive it all, it just came to my mind how um, during Passover, it came um, how we, God had instructed them to eat all of the lamb. And then um, that connected to me with uh, in the communion uh, in the New Testament how God instructed them to eat all of it. And so I think what, what you were alluding to is God is calling us not to, uh, not to stop before we've blessed him by receiving all that he wants to give us. Amen. Because, you know, so oftentimes we're afraid of imposing or taking too much or being greedy or all these other fears we carry from our past and god wants us to be bold enough to take it all yes even that first passover it wasn't just about being saved from death they also had all the prosperity and mm -hmm. no one was feeble when they tried to walk out of egypt there's a whole right. package of healing and prosperity and everything mm -hmm. yeah we often forget about that part of it you know mm -hmm. and that goes back to what you said about the covenant you know, about those two circles where they they merge. Well, God wants us to overlap, you know, take all yeah. of it so that we walk in the character of Christ. And that's what blesses him the most. So, Lord, we ask for the grace <laughs> to expand our willingness to take it all. <laughs> yes. And become responsible stewards of it. Mm -hmm. Dion says he sees a land flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's filled that. with rest. It's filled with rest, too. <laughs> There's no blessing in lack. No. No. And that's what the culture is actively creating at this point. So, Father, we thank you that you are contradicting what the culture of man is doing here and what your enemy Amen. is even trying the word, to. Yeah. Sorry, even the word contradict means it's contra is against and dick to speak. So you're speaking against, yeah. That's mm -hmm. very good. 
We're on the precipice of the golden age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're, we're in it. That's why we see such a clash. Yeah, along the lines with um, eating the whole lamb, because I'm just, you know, looking at that vision of like a bone and, you know, finishing the lamb, um, is that everything is in him. You know, he is everything and everything is right. in him. So when you're kind of devouring the entire, you know, lamb, you're, and nothing is going to waste. And you realize, you know, you have the realization that all of your need mm -hmm. is taken care of by eating all of that oh, yes. meal, you know, every single ailment, every single, you know, request every single thing is filled and fulfilled with the eating of of the entire lamb man when i first saw that bowl try to see inside the bowl that's what i saw it looked like just dried shredded beef or something like that or so maybe it's the lamb i was seeing but it's good either way <laughs> When you were talking about the meat in the bowl, it just reminded me of how you need protein, you know, build strong muscles. And we need the strength to go all the way with God. And we get our strength from his joy. And so he's been <laughs> breaking in and giving us things to, you know, little bits and pieces to enjoy, along with all the provision that he's showing to us. And I Amen. just think... It's amazing to me how God orchestrates all the details <laughs> to get the point across to us. He's a good, you know? good father. Yeah, if you were trying to paint this, there'd be so many, you know, little details tucked in and in between all the different uh, interactions of the colors. It's so neat. You're an awesome God. Oh, boy. <laughs> mm-mm. Well, how's everybody feeling? Mm. We, do we feel peaceful and complete? Yes. Yes. I'm working yes. on receiving the all. <laughs> yes. Yes. It might be nice to linger a little longer. Okay. Yeah. We will. Uh, that that's a tongue twister. Let's linger a little longer. Longer. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank God for his faithfulness and for never withdrawing from us. He never withdraws for us, for, for mm. no matter what we do or what we think or for whatever reason. He mm. never withholds or withdraws his goodness and his love. And his mercy is brand new every day. Yep. Yeah. Every day. Mm. 
I'm just um, meditating on, you know, how we've talk, talked about taking all. And his first commandment is that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And how could we possibly do that if we don't take all of Christ? Because <laughs> he's the only one that was able to do that for God. And so we need all of him to even be able to love God the way he wants to be loved. Amen. Mm. Wow. And it's our union with him that facilitates. Mm -hmm. We can't do it on our own strength. Exactly. Exactly. We have to take, mm. receive all of him in order to give mm. all of our love to him. There's a saying, from him, through him, to him. Mm -hmm. Are all things. Mm. Everything's all wrapped up in him. When you think of all the dimensions you were talking about before, they're all part of our God. And he's eager to share it all with us. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> I am so grateful for how my mindset has been changed since I've been hanging out with you guys. Oh, wow. You know, um, the Lord was showing me like a child's handprint and mm -hmm. kind of telling me, you know, like our, these are the pictures that he has on his refrigerator. <laughs> and yesterday I saw the banqueting table and it was, you know, it went off into infinity. Um, and I saw the, um, you know, an angel at the front, like kind of getting things ready and, you know, I just have these two pictures in front of me with the Lord, you know, just saying how much it delights him that we break bread together, that we share these things together, you know, mm -hmm. that we're talking about him together, um, you know, um, as a family, um, you know, he does have a, a book, you know, of family photos. He does have our pictures on the, you know, our handprints on his refrigerator. He does have this banqueting table looking forward to us all, you know, sitting together wow. with him. Wow. That's part of our Shabbat services. Mm -hmm. Sitting at the table with him. We don't have to wait <laughs> until eternity. It's the Father's good pleasure to give us the keys to the kingdom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we need that key to unlock everything that he has for us or anything that is hindering us mm -hmm. to, to causing it at all that we, we should receive the key. So, yeah, declare that, Anna. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, Father God is every good gift is from you. And tonight you already saw us that you are unlocking everything for us because everything in you is more than enough. It's abundant, it's, it's bountiful. So we already received everything, but now we, we add on it and say, asking for that key. I'm asking any seals here. Do you see any key that he is giving to us? Yes. Yes. I, yeah, yeah then, we're declaring that. Yes, we declare that he's given us that yes. key and we thank him for it. And yeah. let us just reach up and receive it so that it will unlock everything, everything, wealth, prosperity, 
health, everything that that is our inheritance will will be given to us. And mm-hmm. also, I I always have a, um when Maggie talking about the multiplications and the expand, mm-hmm. I'm I'm dwelling on it. It's almost like we're drinking. Because we we have the key and we we unlock everything and we are receiving everything that God in Him for us. That that's why that we can be multi multiplied. Almost I like come to my my mind my images is like how God, um, the fish and the bread. How how oh, He expanded yes, yes. it. It's miracle. I think mm-hmm. we are walking tonight in a supernatural experience. Mm-hmm. And and then if if we just asking uh, receiving and then like what we have, we we have to receive because we we need to have everything that God wants us to have. Then we can give. And I see right. that multiplication, and yes. then that is what they expand. I'm trying to get myself expanded, my container more, and they got <laughs> up more. <laughs> and I'm doing on it, yeah. Mm-hmm. When you were praying, I I had my hand up, put my hand up in the air just spontaneously. And then you said, does anyone have the, does anyone see the key? And I heard your arm and hand is the key. And I said, I was like figuring that out. And it's like, the key is to reach out and receive it and take it. And that unlocks it. (laughs) Yes. That's it. That's it. We did. We did. It's always by faith, and faith works through love. Have we lingered? Have we lingered long enough? (laughs) (laughs) I can hardly say it. (laughs) Used to be a very popular name for naming your your house in South Africa, Linga Longa. You're kidding. (laughs) No, that's I know the expression said so well. And then (laughs) there's actually some other South African people here that built a house. And it's called Linga Longa as well. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see. Elizabeth says, I'm seeing that spiral swirling mm. like liquid gold in a goblet of gold. Wow. I'm oh. seeing that we're feasting and drinking in his abundance. Yes. That's really yes. good. Yes. I also felt that too. Yeah. Everybody okay if we if we yes. Close? Mm-hmm. yes yes Ooh, I feel like I've had a feast tonight. Yes, <laughs> we are. <laughs> so Father, we thank you for this incredible time together. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And with you in this beautiful garden of your presence, your mm. treasure, your abundance, your rest. Your joy, Father, we just thank you for all that you have shown us tonight. And we believe it, we receive it, and we release it to the to the stewards that you see fit. And Lord, we do seal this time together, these dimensions in your love and your light, and your blood. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you.